Hello, in this video we're going to look at the user profile feature on the AIM software to be able to see if we can see not only the data that is provided to us on the measures graph but also see additional insight that might help us understand what's happening on track and how we can actually find improvement in our driving. As you can see from the screen right now I have a view which is uh, created using a series of different channels from my MXL2 that not only includes GPS data like speed, latitudinal information, but also I'm bringing in things like brake pressure, I'm bringing in throttle position, RPMs uh, of the car, and of course you get the usual uh, time over distance analysis that gives you an idea of which lap was faster than the other and where. But I want to be able to see additional insights that are provided to me by the AIM uh, studio. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to load up a feature called GPS. Across the top here, you'll see there's a series of buttons, and I'm going to click on the one here that says GPS, or PGS, as it shows up on the button. But trust me, that's the GPS. And what you'll see is it loads a tab down here at the bottom, which shows the map. This just happens to be the racetrack in Spokane, Washington, uh, of both laps overlaid against each other. You can see these are the positions of the car on track as recorded by the GPS. Now we're aware at times that this might not necessarily be as accurate as it can be, but sometimes it gives a really good indication of uh, where the car was positioned at a particular point on track. However, in order to be able to see the information that we need in a little bit more detail, we want to be able to see not only this map of the position, but we also want to see the measures graph at the same time. Right now you have to toggle between the two, which actually can be quite frustrating if you're trying to position a point on track. And so what you can do, just using simple Windows technology, is you can almost cascade the windows by clicking on this button. And now you'll see that we have windows that are available to be increased in size and blown up as we see fit. So if I click on this one here, I can resize it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this one down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the GPS over, so I want that to be showing up here. And interestingly, right now I don't want to see the chart on the left-hand side or the bar with all the channels, so I'm just going to hit the space bar and minimize that. Um, and what you can then do is you can actually bring this in and you can say, okay, now what I'm going to see is I'm going to see the GPS chart and I'm going to see the measures graph uh, on the screen at the same time. Now what I can do is I can see both points and whenever I click on the um, point on the measures graph, it changes where I'm positioned on the track. So the two are synchronized with each other so you can see different positions and points on track. Now what I can do is I can actually zoom in in certain places and see a different view. So if, for example, I wanted to, um, so I'm just going to minimize that. If I wanted to be able to go in and say, okay, I want to zoom in on this area, you can see that it's this point here that all of a sudden, while the blue lap is going faster than the red lap, all of a sudden um, the red lap loses speed. Now we're not talking huge amounts of time here, but we're about 0.1 of a second faster at this point, and we go to being about 0.1 of a second slower. So in this instance, there's a 0.2 of a second difference. And so let's zoom in on this point and see what's going on. So by clicking on this zoom button, I can actually take this section here by dragging it over. It's going to zoom in. But what it's also going to do is it's going to zoom in on the actual map itself. Now, that's pretty small. So what we can do is we can hold down the shift button and we can uh, click on the window and open it up a little bit. So I'm zooming up with my mouse right now. You can do it with the shift um, and up button as well on your keyboard. And now what we can start to see is some particularly more interesting information on this screen. Now, while this isn't necessarily an analysis video in terms of what's looking at it, by taking this shallower line through the corner, you can see that I'm able to carry more speed uh, through this, which is allows the, the red line to carry more speed and actually get faster um, then the blue line is here. You can see that while the blue line in terms of uh, throttle position was definitely on the gas sooner, interestingly from the brakes you can see that there's a lot more brake pressure added on the blue line which overslows the car and while the blue line is getting on the throttle necessarily harder sooner, the speed is being carried through the corner at this point. So that's some interesting information that we're gathering from this. However, this is a video that's talking about user profiles. And so what if I wanted to be able to see this profile again and use it um, when and if I needed it? And this is where the user profile functionality comes in very handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the space bar. I'm going to go back to this tab at the top called user profiles and I'm going to click on create new user profile as I would do. And here I'm going to use GPS map um, and measures graph analysis. And um, there's a limit to the number of characters you can put in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put measures uh, analysis here. 
and I'm going to click on OK. Now what I've got is I've got this view which is saved for whenever I need to use it again. So now what I have the option of being able to do is if I wanted to be able to see just the measures graph, I can click here and I can say I want to see the full MXL2 analysis and the screen changes to this. Uh, I can zoom out and see the whole lap and I can change the colors of my maps so they actually look very similar. So there you see that in terms of where it was. However, if I wanted to go back and see that actual analysis uh, using the GPS map and the measures graph together, I can go back to user profiles, now click on map and measures. It goes back to that, shrinking down the keyboard, brings it to the screen you wanted to see. And remember, if there's any point in the track you wanted to be able to zoom in on, you just click the plus button, zoom in to where you need to be. That gives you the inputs you need, and then just click on the GPS map, hold down shift, press up, and it'll move the map into wherever you need it. Or you can use the mouse to move it around and understand more there. So that's the opportunity of using the user profile to see different analysis at different points. I happen to have used every channel that I had in my general MXL2 analysis. However, if you just really wanted to pinpoint a position on the track with driver inputs, regardless of what the engine was doing, for example, you can also do that by changing the channels. And so the opportunity for you to be able to customize this is there, and it's an opportunity for you to be able to create the view that gives you the insight and information that you need to be able to make this work for you.